uh, talked with the dispatchers over at Penobscot Regional Communications. I asked them about road conditions. They said uh, actually that they haven't had very many problems. However, voter turnout is expected to be higher than it typically is. The sledding conditions, I am told, I haven't had a chance to check them out myself yet, but I am told that they are fabulous and you can go flying down the hill. It was quite obvious for some of the kids it was much easier getting the shot than it was for others, but parents agree it's much easier to have a couple of minutes of pain than several days of illness. So how does Twitter work? Well, you have to first sign up and give yourself a screen name. Mine is Caramac. The roads are still slick, the plow crews are still out, and it still pretty much looks like a snow globe. The area just off of Falls Islands is known as the Falls, and the current there is very strong, as well as with the rest of the bay. And with that current being so strong, the debris field could be very wide. Police say that the thieves have basically been going from car to car, and when they find one that's unlocked, they take what they want. John Turner and Jamie Hatch love being out in Cobbs Cook Bay. They fish the waters, collect mussels there, and now monitor buoys. The state is placed there. Set the, set the buoy out that we've marked on our GPS. The buoys are part of a monitoring program the Department of Marine Resources started in the past few years, first in Casco Bay and now in Cobbs Cook Bay. I mean, I have people say to me all the time, well, wow, you know, we're getting, you know, 20 more days of clamming in because... Using muscles attached to the buoy, scientists are able to tell whether there's red tide in the water. Red tide is a toxic algae that infects shellfish and can be deadly to humans. It doesn't take many muscles to be sick. If the toxin shows up in the water, the state shuts down the area to hundreds of fishermen. There have been land test sites for years, but the department has found water testing helps cut down on the number or size of red tide closures. And it was nice for them because a lot more got to opened. Mm -hmm. We kept a lot more right. because we could get into these little places where they go by boat, mm -hmm. where you can't get in from land mm -hmm. before they would just shut it down. But in the past two weeks, three of the 15 buoys in Cobscook have disappeared. We're going to go over to Estes Head and put a, replace a buoy that was there that was lost. The buoys that are gone and that Turner and Hatch are replacing are called Estes Head, Lincoln and Park. Two of them are at the mouths of bays. One of the biggest concerns that they have if a buoy is cut is they lose three weeks of data. And in that time, if red tide shows up on shore, they have to close the rest of the bay as well. Once we lose that ability to see what's going on, we have no choice but to go with the big closures again like we had done in the past. Kucher isn't sure what has happened to the buoys, but she says it's very apparent they have been cut. Turner says people may not realize the impact of their actions. And you figure 4th of July coming, people are tourists are here, they want clams, the restaurants want clams, they want mussels, so there's more to the big picture than I think people are seeing. For now, they'll replace the buoys, continue to gather data and hope there isn't a lot of red tide and that the buoys in the water now will stay there. The Computer Crimes Unit of the State Police investigates all sorts of computer-based cases from sexting to dissemination of child pornography. It takes on hundreds of cases each year, but it also has a backlog of cases. Right now, the sergeant in charge of that unit says the backlog includes approximately 250 cases that they have deemed the worst of the worst. The warrants are written, but the cases are just sitting in a bin waiting for action. The Computer Crimes Unit has a small office on the fourth floor of the Criminal Justice Academy in Vassalboro. There are a few desks, some computers, and a small staff but its workload is immense. It's a, it's a bad situation. The unit says in 2009, child pornography was sent or received in Maine 57,000 times. In a 10-day period at the end of the year, it tagged 200 different internet addresses that downloaded child porn. Possession or dissemination of child pornography. Sergeant Glenn Lang and his lead detective sift through the cases, looking to see what kind of images and videos these people are exchanging. I mean, it's hideous beyond belief. They pick what they deem the worst of the worst and request subpoenas so they can serve search warrants on the houses attached to those accounts. When I say the worst of the worst, we're looking at the people who are sharing uh, a fair number of pictures or videos um, or people who are in possession of uh, something that rises to the next level with regard to child pornography. In many of those cases, it involves uh, videos uh, explaining how to sexually assault children and get away with it. Lang says if they determine that the address is a daycare or belongs to someone who has easy access to children, they will execute the search warrant quickly. 
But many times the investigation stops here, in this bin. I will guarantee that within those cases that we have in our backlog, there are people in that bin who are actively assaulting children. Lang explains with the workload his unit already has and the number of cases they receive weekly, it simply isn't possible to execute every warrant and proceed on every case. I'll tell you, it's a staggering wait, you know, to know that um, those cases are sitting back there. Uh, you know, I know they exist. And to not be out there, you know, addressing those cases, uh, it's, a, it's a terrible thing. You know, it's something we live with here on a daily basis. Using children. Representative Richard Sykes of Harrison is a member of the Criminal Justice and Public Safety Committee. The committee recently met the Computer Crimes Unit and saw the bin of vital cases. And that's sitting on a desk, uh, not being dealt with as fast as it should be. Uh, that is something that this, uh, this uh, entire legislature and the chief executive need, need to realize, in my opinion, is a priority and ought to be funded. Sykes admits shifting funding from another state program to this one would not be a popular decision, but he says dealing with the safety of children is a priority. I would rate the computer crimes section of the crime lab as a priority and maybe not realize, realize that we're not able to fund some of these other programs. To this point, we're not doing that, and that's something I would suggest that we do in the future. The commissioner of the Department of Public Safety Upgrade says some changes you know, are being made. It's obviously a huge concern of ours. Um, Any time a child is abused is a huge concern, and we'll do whatever we can to protect those little ones. Through Federal Recovery Act money starting February 1st, the Computer Crimes Unit got two additional detectives. There's also an assistant attorney general assigned to the unit, and Commissioner Ann Jordan says when they can, state police officers work with the unit. We're doing the very best we can, but with budget cuts and limitations, um, we don't have the size staff that would be optimal, but we're doing the best by bringing in and finding alternative forms of outside funding. But Jordan says there are the same number of sworn officers with the state police now as there was in 1971, and they are constantly juggling how to delegate those 321 officers. Is it really appropriate to take a detective off the road to work on some backlogged um, cases when we don't have anyone to respond to a domestic violence situation which could turn into a death. Jordan is confident with the new detectives the backlog at the computer crimes unit will diminish, but she never sees a time when that bin will be empty. Now, Sergeant Glenn Lang says sometimes the idle cases in the bin become too old to work or to request search warrants. He says the cases that are currently in the bin go back about a year and a half.